The Hand Axe is the best offhand weapon in the game, whether you're a strength build, a dex build, or even if you're running some kind of failed lab experiment. So, how did this weapon, something that previously had a lifetime subscription to your storage container, get to be the absolute peak of the meta? Hi, my name is Rust. I'm a Soulsborne content creator with an emphasis on PvP. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly what makes the Hand Axe so incredibly strong and how you can use it. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you found this information helpful at all, or if you're just more confused than ever. The Hand Axe falls into one of three categories of the Axe Weapon class, the others being the Warped Axe moveset and the Cleaver moveset. So what makes the Hand Axe so special? One frame. The Hand Axe moveset comes out at 13 frames, landing by the 14th frame if you're locked onto the opponent. This one singular frame may not sound like much, but it makes all the difference in the world. With the speed that the Hand Axe provides, you can reliably land through combos off of a number of standing R1s, including those from Halberds, Scythes, and Whips, and the Crouch R1 of a Colossal Sword. This does not apply to the movesets of other axe types, which often need to be free-aimed to a highly specific angle and within a certain range in order to confirm a true combo. A true combo is inescapable, so as long as you land the first attack, the second one is guaranteed. But the Hand Axe isn't the only weapon that can land true combos off of something like a main hand halberd. Offhand daggers, thrusting swords, fists, and a number of weapons when properly free-aimed can all land true combos after a hit from the halberd as well. Thrusting Swords in particular have always been paired alongside Halberds for this reason. Thrusting Swords have the benefit of great speed, subtle animations, and excellent range. So why would you ever use a Hand Axe over one of these, or one of these other options? Poise Damage Whether you're a juiced up full goat with double bleed spears or a roly poly with your backward ass bitch blades, when it comes against a Hand Axe, you absolutely need to respect it. Any one-handed small weapon only does up to 110 poise damage on their first L1 of their attack chain, except for axes and hammers, which deal 150 poise damage on their first L1, making these the only weapons that can break max poise. Being able to ensure a poise break on these attacks is super important, as it denies the opponent its ability to mindlessly mash out a hit stun from your attacks. That is, until we run into people with Hyper Armor. Hyper Armor is a fucking war crime in this game, and it allows someone to completely turn off their brain and mash their face into the controller, and unfortunately, it'll work. This is where we get into the system of priority. First, let's assume that the opponent has 88 poise without Bullgoat Talisman. If you have a Pata in your main hand and an Axe in your offhand, and you can continuously alternate between R1 and L1, and no matter how hard they try, they will never be able to successfully mash out a hit stun. That is, unless they have a weapon with hyper armor. Both your hand axe and your pata only deal a level 1 stun, which is a fairly short stun duration. So by the time that you start a swing with your hand axe, they'll already have entered hyper armor frames, preventing them from being stunned from your offhand attack. But let's see what happens when we use something like a halberd with an offhand axe. A halberd is considered a medium class weapon and deals a level 2 hit stun. So, after a hit from a halberd, even someone with hyper armor won't be able to get their hyper armor fast enough to mash out a hit stun. They will be interrupted by the hand axe, since it's a true combo from the halberd. But after you land a hit from the hand axe, priority starts to get a little tricky. Different weapons provide various levels of hyper armor. If your opponent is using a weapon with the hyper armor of a greatsword or less, then if they don't have Bullgoat Talisman, they won't be able to mash out a hit stun after the Hand Axe hit. But, if they do have Bullgoat Talisman, or anything of the Hyper Armor of a Great Hammer or higher, then they'll be able to freely mash out a hit stun. And as I've always said, everyone, and I mean everyone, mashes out a hit stun. But I have a solution for that. The undeniable, uncontestable way to reliably and consistently beat brain dead mashers is to play like a bitch. More accurately, it's to respect their priority, and to avoid risking trades from the random chance that the hyper armor enthusiast will quite literally mash their face into their controller. After you land a hit from the hand axe, you need to be prepared for the potential hyper armor mash, and move to outspace the hit. By taking a short step just outside of mashing range, you can then reaction punish their mash, 
if you see them cue an attack. Once your opponent starts to finally figure out that, hey, mashing out a hit stun isn't working, well, they'll probably keep doing it anyway. Here you go. But sometimes, sometimes, they start to learn. And this is where you can start incorporating mix-ups. The off axe has a ton of great pseudo combos, allowing you to reliably roll catch after landing a hit from it. My absolute favorite being yet another chop from the hand axe. By staggering your attacks, you can land consecutive chains of roll catches with a hand axe just by walking up to them and pressing L1. But the mix-ups get much more creative than that. If you start your chain by landing a hit with a halberd and then true combo into the off axe, then you can immediately roll catch with another hit from the halberd, giving you yet another true combo into the hand axe, letting you roll catch with a halberd. Basically, unless your opponent doesn't stop panic rolling, then as long as you have a good connection with them, you can blunder them down with one string of attacks of true and pseudo combos. The only way to avoid it is to actually time your rolls and avoid getting hit by the halberd. That is, until you get caught off guard by a random hit from the hand axe. And trust me, no one expects the random axe attack. So you've got your opponent on the ropes. They're scared out of their mind because you keep whip punishing them every time that they mash out a hit stun, they keep getting roll caught by the halberd or the hand axe, and their eyes are twitching, they're fucking ready. They're locked in. They can reaction roll anything. The off axe synergizes really well with a ton of Ashes of War from the main hand weapon, but probably one of the best ones is Flaming Strike. After landing a hit from the hand axe, if they panic roll, they'll be caught by the Flaming Strike and then comboed in the follow up. If they try and mash out of the hand axe, but don't have hyper armor, then they'll just get stunned and then you can Flaming Strike again. And until they learn to roll... It, n never mind. The Hand Axe is undeniably the best offhand weapon in Elden Ring, being the second fastest offhand weapon in the game, second only to a dagger, and being one of the few weapons with a consistent poise break on its attack, and having access to a number of strong and reliable true and pseudo combos. With its incredible mix-up potential, it's super easy to blunder someone down, from full health to zero in a matter of seconds, and it denies even the most aggressive player from brainlessly mashing out a hit stun. This weapon has had a full anime arc of going from being the high school loser that no one ever knew existed to becoming Hokage, the first ever Super Saiyan. It's got the Hinokami Kagura, you name it, this axe fucks. So go and try it. That's gonna do it for this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.